<laughs> but yeah, just a word for for context. Okay. Maybe. Well. Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are merciful, that you are loving, that you have a plan. Uh, let us walk in your victory. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So we're in New King James. We're in Jude, the first chapter, which is funny because there's only one chapter. Um, and we're getting to we're getting to the end, and it, it, it's been a strong word against uh, those that cause division, those that are complainers, those that are grumblers, those that are walking according to their own way, the flatterers, and uh, strong warnings about people in our congregations that are uh, that are causing harm. Right. So. That takes, go ahead, Rich. You had some things to say about that. Yeah, uh, Jude obviously spends a lot of time on uh, discussing the uh, characteristics of these people. Um, it seems to me to boil down to uh, the ungodliness, as we talked about yesterday, that this term uh, being essentially the antithesis of godliness which to me is essentially having the spirit of agape. And uh, it's, uh, it, it's, this is the focus, I think, of the people that we have to be wary of um, and considering the characteristics that are given here. They're, 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 the sense is that they, uh, they undermine, they're, su they're, sub they're subterfuge uh, the uh, work of the gospel. And uh, important that, uh, and as, as Jude will say very shortly here, um, they just don't have the spirit. Right. And, and they just they lack the spirit of agape and their whole world is just void of it. And it just, uh, they're just very different after all. They, they can look very, they look just like you and me. They can draw, they can uh, enter praise and worship services and look just like us, raising their hands and so forth. But uh, when you get right down to it, uh, the spirit of agape just isn't there. Hey, Mike. Hey, how are you, bro? We've had a number of church splits over our time, and uh, and sometimes good and godly people just disagreed about something, and they right. uh, went off to their own place. And sometimes, and we've had people who are just inherently evil uh, yeah. doing whatever they can for their own for their own good. So it's really yeah. hard to say from what category they are, but that we would love each other um, and have discernment at the same time is a, is a powerful combination. Right. So we're picking up uh, verse 17 today against that, that, that backdrop. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that there would be mockers in the last time would walk according to their own ungodly lusts okay okay and if you want to check that you can check it in peter you can check it in paul's writings um and in uh and in some of the gospels that they'll be mockers that they'll uh they'll walk according to their own ways and uh and it'll get more and more emphasized the closer we get to the day of the lord which isn't just one day um so you've been warned by me, Jude. You've been warned by Paul. You've been warned by Peter. You've been warned. You've been warned. You've been warned. Yep. Yep. Comes again and again. Uh, Lord, uh, verse 19. These are sensual persons. In other words, they live by the physical senses. They're not just not just talking about eroticism here, but, uh, you know, there are people that say, uh, you'll find many an atheist will say, if I can't uh, touch it, smell it, see it, it's not real. Uh, you know, that's that's their the realm. They, just no spiritual sense they have. They deal with, they live in a world of physical senses, sensations only. And they which cause division the not having the spirit. Yeah. Which is weird because we can hear less than 10% of the world of sound. And we can see less than 10% of the world of light. Um, 
are, you know, there's some animals that can see more and whatever, but smell. so <laughs> when they make a claim that they only trust what they see and hear, they're missing out on a whole bunch of the universe. Sorry to cut you off, Mike. I, like, like, how do they describe smell back then? Like, you know, it's coming from the incense. Yeah. You can't see it or or whatever it's coming from, fruit or whatever. Yeah. You know it's coming from there. You can't see it. There's no physical evidence of it except for the smell. That's right. But you can't see it. You can't see right. smell. <laughs> yeah. And so animals, then again, like you were saying, have a super smell. They can sense. Or they have a super whatever. Yeah, yeah. You know, they mm -hmm. have super eyes and yeah. super radar or whatever. Yeah. But yep. so to say that everything you see is all that you trust in is really a, a limiting statement because there's a whole bunch of things you can't see, love, and, and uh, all of the atom stuff that uh, yeah. protons and neutrons are separated. But anyway, I mean, they knew what they were talking about back then, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you know, That's of right. everything being made of that which is unseen. Amen. I mean, Preach it. We look at it now and say, oh my God, you look under, we can't even understand what we're seeing. And, and the fact that we thought we were seeing the end of the universe <laughs> and the fact that it just keeps going and going and going and going, you know, yep. um, nothing but God. But you, brother, go ahead, Rich, yep. 20. Yeah, th so this is the last word that, uh, that Jude has directly uh, aimed at these people. Let me just read it once in the NLT verse 19. Um, these, these people are the ones who are creating divisions among you. They follow their natural instincts, right? Sensual, natural instincts, because they do not have God's spirit in them. That's the last word. They don't have God's spirit. Very interesting. Verse 20. But you, dear friends, must build each other up in your most holy faith. Pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. And wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will bring you to eternal life. In this way, you will keep yourselves safe in God's love. That's all. Or the more traditional reading is in New King James. King James, same version, uh, verse 20. Yeah. Uh, but you, beloved, build yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Yes. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Okay, so we often think about building ourselves up as being a prideful thing. But if you're building yourself up in the holy faith, then you're in the word, then you're in worship, then you're praying in the Holy Spirit in tongues, um, that you're fortifying yourself so that you can be the man or woman of God that he has called you to be. And you can be the warrior that he's called you to be because because you've taken the time in your quiet to 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 edify yourself by confession, adoration, thanksgiving, supplication, that you can make a difference because so I was in on campus and I went to a retreat and the guest speaker said, I get all of you firebrands here trying to light it up. And I have to tell you, if you aren't good in private, you'll never be good in public. And yeah. I thought, and it's funny, 40 years later, I remember that. That's the only thing I remember from that whole message, mm -hmm. that you got to be good. You've got to be good in private before you can go and be good in public. So you got to be people of prayer. you got to be people of worship. you got to be people of, of the word. you got to be people of that there's a time. So I think about our special forces. Our special forces train seven days a week, and they are the best in the world, but but they want to get better. They want to be more of a team. You think about an Olympic athlete. An Olympic sprinter can work 60 hours a week, and if he gets two one-tenth of a second off his best time, it's been a glorious week worth all of that. One-tenth of a second. That's mm -hmm. how... Because he's constantly and she's constantly building themselves up for that for that event. And how much more, how much more precious is this event that we would walk in fellowship with the Holy Spirit? I think also I've shared this before, but I like it, so I'll do it again. 
my dad had a porch with a rocker in it. And every time my cousins would come by, part of the highlight of their week or their visit was to sit with my dad and just tell him stories and, and laugh together and, and whatever. This was the this relationship was the high point of their visit. Yeah, they liked they liked me and they liked the food and they liked, but that that piece where they were sitting in the porch with my dad was the high point for them. And that was what they talked about afterwards. And it was glorious. So so how much better that we have a relationship with the with the good, good father, the creator of the universe. Build yourself up. And keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus into eternal life. So there's grace here, there's justification, sanctification, and glorification. And then uh, this is the Christian walk. Mm. And the contrast is between this and this. These are grumblers, they're mockers, they're, they're filled with ungodly lust, they're caused division, and you... And you build yourselves up in the holy faith, pray in the spirit, and keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord. Amen. And we talked about verse 22 a few days ago, but we'll do it again. Yeah, you must show mercy to those whose faith is wavering. That's an LT, KJV, NKJV. And on some have compassion, making a distinction. But others, verse 23, Save with fear, pulling themselves out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Okay, so this is a, sometimes people get saved by love, compassion, and sometimes they get saved by fear. Now, it's not, it's not better, <laughs> oh, I got saved by fear, well, I got saved by love, there's no, there's no better there, there's the saved there, um, making a distinction but others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire. And sometimes people come to faith literally because they're scared of hell. And, I, um, you know, that's a reality. Some are saved because they've been loved into the kingdom. And that... that well, often, Jesus himself brings that out. Jesus himself in uh, Ma uh, Matthew 10, 28, fear not the one who can kill your body. Fear the one who can kill body and soul in hell that's right so he tells so, us in so many words fear him <laughs> because he's so the one have, that can destroy body and soul in hell so pull him out of that fire <laughs> so how do we know whether this person wants needs compassion or he needs fear the holy spirit is guiding us and cares more about this person we're having contact with than we do so if we're willing he will show us which way to go uh if we're not willing, if we only got one tool in our toolbox, then then we aren't as effective as God uh, show me how to deal with this person. Okay, now here is a thing called the doxology. Some churches sing it at the end of uh, service, and, and there's some modifications on it. But this is how this is how Jude ends his book, his letter to these folks. Um, and remember, he's taken them, he's challenged the ungodly, the wicked, the deceiver, the um, the dismemberer, the one who separates the body. And now he comes down to 24, 25. Read them together, yeah. please, Rick. Yeah, this is a, an extension of grace uh, against a... Um... A message of um, wariness, really, of um, the potential pitfalls of dealing with people that aren't in the spirit and who are undermining and subterfuging the work, work of the uh, gospel. Verse 24, against that backdrop, he says, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. In the uh, NLT. Uh, um, sure. Verse 24. Uh, now all glory to God, who is able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy 
into his glorious presence without a single fault. All glory to him who alone is God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord. All glory, majesty, power, and authority are his before all time and in the present and beyond all time. Amen. Amen. What a powerful ending. Perhaps the most powerful ending in the scriptures, maybe not, but certainly one of them. Um, the he's able way. to keep you. How is he able to keep you? Because he loves you and he doesn't want you to fall. When we fall, no. we know that we have one who can, who can confess no. our sins, faithful and just. Mike, what are you thinking? I'm thinking that um, as, as a Christian and um, going through times, good times, bad times, all times, uh, we all as Christians um, go through different times and the closer we are to him, the more we're able to endure hardships and different things because we have our focus on the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. and our salvation. It's like um, to die is is to go to heaven and to live is to go on and do what God would have me to do, you know, yeah. to live out this life. And um with your eye on on salvation and eternity and seeing our loved ones and just being in glory with Christ is just more valuable. So through the hard times, I tend to lean more on the privacy of my own home and worship. I read every day. I I consume my life with with reading and, and a lot of stuff. It's funny that my mom did when she was alive. <laughs> she and, sure did. And, and so the times that I have that I'm by myself, I've had people come by the house and say, oh, you're listening to the Bible. It's like, yeah, that's kind of what I like to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? I really enjoy. I, I finally, I hit the New Testament. I'm in Matthew now. Yay. I've, uh, I've read through the whole entire Old Testament. It's taken me a few months. I'm, I'm, it was really good. I'm glad I did that. Amen. Mm. But, but each step of, of, I just want to conclude by saying each step, um, it drew, drew me closer to him in my, my prayer life and my uh, research and my daily uh, prayer and word life. Um, it's 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 really changed my life and it just i feel like we're in the end times and uh it's time to hold on and and maybe yeah by fear i i'm not so much as um in fear of hell now yeah. i'm in love with christ you Amen. know so um yeah it helps drawing close to him will get you through amen amen so, we're going to attempt to be in Mark tomorrow. Uh, so if you want to read ahead, that's where we are. Final thoughts on Jude, Rich. Yeah, very powerful letter. We've given this once over. As I said, um, there are, uh, we've got commentators that have put, that, uh, for which you can uh, research eight hours of video <laughs> yeah. on this one page. Uh, it's that extensive. There's so much built in here. Uh, but uh, it drills down into Old Testament stories that uh, are really rich if you put the time into it. But uh, the overall yeah. message is, uh, you know, be wary. But in the end, God alone can bring you to a position yeah. of salvation uh, in his majesty and glory. And that's what we have to look forward to. Cling Amen. to that view. <laughs> Amen. Lord, Amen. we thank you for loving us this much. We thank you for the challenge of the book of Jude. But we also thank you for the victory in the book of Jude. Lead us, guide us. Let us not only be hearers of your word, but doers. Transform me, O oh Lord, so I can make a difference. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Father, for this day. I ask you to just bless our pastors, O oh God. Um, heal them as they've been feeling under the weather. And um, continue to bless them, Lord God. Con to continue to Look after your flock, Lord, here. And um, for the people that can't even leave their houses, that are able to listen online, I pray that you bless them also, Lord yes. God. 
and be with each and every one of us today in the decisions we make, Lord God. We thank you for the book of Jude as we, we thank you for each and every one of your scriptures and every yes. day we give you the praise and thanks. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, thank you, Lord, again for your word, your spirit, and the direction you've provided for us. We just simply ask for your continued leading that we may live lives that glorify you in Yeshua's name. Amen, amen. amen. Blessings to you all. Amen. Bye. Bye. <laughs>